<sighs> okay. <laughs> What's up, er <sighs> Tired man. One more try. <coughs> What's up, everybody? D-Man back. Welcome back to a brand new video, and today we're going to be doing another Monarch News Roundup. That's right, in this video, we will be continuing our chronological progression through the development of the upcoming Monarch television show by talking about events that happened in November of 2022. November is another nice month for us. There's actually not as much going on with the Monarch show as I thought there was. That's good. I'm going to jump into it with art like normal. Starting out with CPT Pancakes, Godzilla King of the Monsters mini paintings. These are wonderful. These are all mini canvases and you can see just a scale comparison compared to the keyboard right up there. They're like the size of the space bar and the alt key. They are tiny and yet there's so much great detail packed in these. Congratulations on this. They look great. I love what I'm seeing here. The color palettes are really cool too. I like the green with the Mothra, Red Rodan, and then the Blue Gods of Ligodora fight. That's pretty sick, the way that the purple's blended in there too. One of the little details I like is how you can line them all up and you can see that like the black spots create the illusion that they're all part of one big picture together. That's awesome stuff, but it's just fantastic. You got a great Mothra design there. You actually did the Haya thing before Haya did it with the greenish Mothra wings turning into the orange ones. Rodan's looking fantastic there and Gods of Ligodora are so cute. There's something adorable about the two of them and yet they are so cool. I like the burn cities in the background and the fire rubble under Ghidorah's feet. That's good stuff, man. This whole thing is really, really wonderful. I'm super into this one. You did a great job. GNA made this wonderful tribute for Godzilla remembering Mothra when King of the Monsters came out. It's just beautiful. First of all, I'm always a fan of GNA's art style. I think it's just wonderful. And here the colors are fantastic. I love when GNA does sunset art. It's always so beautiful, especially with it reflecting in the water here. It's so gorgeous. You've got Godzilla walking away into the distance, which is a very Showa era way for him to end a movie. I love it. I wish they they ended more Godzilla movies like that. I always think it's fun. I know 2014 and GVK sort of did that, but still, I like seeing him walk away. But if you look in the water, you can see the reflection of Mothra sitting on his back, showing that he still remembers her sacrifice and appreciates her. That's really beautiful. The next one, holy cow, this is crazy. This one comes from TKY. It is his King of the Monsters poster. It is so, so gorgeous, so well detailed. This looks hand-drawn and it looks incredible. You've got Mothra down there at the bottom. Again, another perfect way to blend the blue and the orange wings together in a very creative way. She's sitting in the rubble and above her is Rodan who's pinned under Ghidorah and Godzilla who are fighting. It's just so great. I can, oh, there's so much I love in here. I love the Ghidorah poses. I love how long his necks are. I love the whole frame. I love the way that they're fighting. It's very Heisei. Oh, this thing's just great. And I love the way that Godzilla's got some battle damage, getting the blood streaking down his shoulders. Ghidorah bites him and he's shooting his beam into the sky. This is one of the coolest fan arts I think I've seen for Godzilla King of the Monsters. I am a obsessed with every single detail of it. I think it just looks so wonderful and incredible. I'm so into it. Fantastic work, TKY. I don't know if that thing blew up back in the day. I don't personally remember seeing it a ton, so I'm not sure it did, but that thing deserves more attention. All right, getting into the Monarch updates again, not the full title for the show. It'll probably be something like Monarch Legacy of Monsters. KDM, who gives us most of the information in this video, so go check him out. I've got all the links down below for all this stuff, but KDM confirmed that the Monarch television show will be 10 episodes and Godzilla is confirmed to appear in them. Now, that's not to say Godzilla will appear in all 10. If I had to personally guess, I'm gonna assume Godzilla will probably be in the first chunk of episodes and the last chunk of episodes. He might have one cameo an episode. I could see them doing something like that, but just based on the way that like Singular Point went down, the Kong anime that came from Legendary, just the, the traditional television structure, it seems like you would start with a Godzilla epic first episode or one or two episodes of Godzilla right at the top. Maybe Maybe a mid-season like episode 5-ish Godzilla appearance and then an episode 9 and 10 appearance for Godzilla. That seems like what the traditional structure for a show would be and then you'd sprinkle other titans into the rest of it. But I don't know. That's just a guess. We actually have an email confirmation of these series details. This comes to us from Matt Fraction who is the co-executive producer for the show and one of the people who pitched it in the first place. He states that the show does have an official title. It's had an official title for over a year now. We just don't quite know what it's supposed to be yet. He says he's not allowed to say it either. Godzilla is 
in the show and it's 10 episodes, he says that Kurt Russell was also on set for the beginning of shooting and that he, Matt Fraction, got to spend a lot of time with Kurt Russell. It seems like Russell might have been on set during the filming of the first two episodes, which are directed by Matt Shackman. Now, there are rumors that Kurt Russell's role will be pretty small in the show, but very significant, meaning he'll kind of be a guest player who shows up for meaningful moments here and there. I personally think the way they're going to use him is by having our main characters, like Anna Sawai's character, Kate, go to him, ask him for information, and then he'll launch into a story, and when he tells us his stories, we'll flash back to the young version of Lee Shaw, played by Wyatt Russell, his son. That's what I think is going to happen. But that's exciting, man. Kurt Russell's definitely got me the most hyped for this show. I cannot wait to see him in it. He's one of my fave actors, and so I'm very excited about that. Sasha Pilsen joins as a Russian dialogue coach for this show. He's a very famous and well-regarded foreign dialogue coach, especially when it comes to Russian. Obviously, that just means we're going to get some Russian characters in this show, some people who are going to be speaking with a Russian accent, it sounds like. Maybe he is actually teaching people Russian language. Maybe it'll be people speaking with a Russian accent. But that's exciting. I don't know what that entails. I'm very curious to know, like, what the political atmosphere of the MonsterVerse is. Like, was Russia in on the Monarch operations? How international was Monarch? Seems like Monarch originally starts as just a US thing, and then it involves Japan, and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm wondering where Russia got involved. I hope they don't do the trope where all Russians are always bad guys all the time forever. It'd be interesting to see Monarch be this kind of international thing, one of the only things in the world that is running smoothly with multiple countries helping out. Meanwhile, their actual countries are in turmoil. The people working for Monarch realize that there's bigger things to worry about. That'd be great. That's the kind of stuff Ashira Honda always loved to do. The good old brotherhood of man. The Emmy-nominated Jed Glassford, who did VFX on Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and War for the Planet of the Apes, joins Monarch as the on-set visual effects supervisor. On-set VFX supervisor probably means anything practical, I'm thinking. It also, I'm gonna think, means mocap. Now, I'm not sure if he's doing mocap himself. Maybe he's bringing to life some of the Titans, like Godzilla or some of the other guys. We actually don't know if any mocap was involved in this show. It'll be really sad to learn that they did mocap and didn't bring back TJ Storm to do Godzilla again. That would be really disappointing if they just gave it to the VFX supervisor, kind of like what they did with Kong and Godzilla vs. Kong in the New Empire. That's fantastic to hear we have such a well-regarded VFX artist working on this movie. The VFX and Dawn and War for the Planet of the Apes, in my opinion, are the absolute pinnacle of VFX at the moment. I haven't seen Avatar The Way of Water yet, okay? I'm sorry, so maybe that's the one. But War for the Planet of the Apes is just an astounding and breathtaking movie, so that makes me really happy to hear he's involved. There was an open casting call posted for military personnel. It was in December and it was looking for military personnel on the Oahu Island of Hawaii. That's very King of the Monsters. I remember there was a lot of King of the Monsters casting calls for military people. That makes sense. We're going to see a lot of stuff at the U.S. military. I'm expecting some battleships. I'm expecting a whole bunch of stuff, just like the King of the Monsters era. And especially because we're jumping around through history and we're going to be seeing a militarized monarch in the early days, I could definitely see that being the case where they need a lot of military personnel. Adam Christianer joins the monarch television show. He joins the cast for it. Don't have anything to to say about that. I just wanted to let you know. He wasn't the only ones as Charlie Karumi joins the Monarch television show as Dr. Yudekwa. I don't know how to say his real name, nor do I know how to say his character's name, but I would guess based on the doctor and his title that he will be working for Monarch in the same capacity that like Dr. Sarazawa works for Monarch, and he's a doctor. He could also be a literal doctor, like a health doctor, I don't know. Why did I do a magnifying glass for health doctor? I don't know. Junichi Tajiri joins the Monarch television show. He joins episode one as a Japanese trawler captain. Ooh, that makes me excited. That makes me think that in the first episode, we're going to see a monster attack in Japanese waters. What if the first scene of this show, I just thought of this. I don't think this is going to be the case. I think we're going to pick up in 2014. But what if, what if, what if the first scene in modern day after the battle of San Francisco in this show took place in the ocean and we start out with a trail of water going behind the boat and then there's a sinking of the ship and it like totally parallels the beginning of the original 1954 Godzilla and also to a degree Shin Godzilla. That'd be incredible. Also, 98 vibes. Godzilla 1998 starts with a Japanese fishing trawler getting attacked and sunken by Godzilla. So who knows? Maybe they're doing something like that. Just a classic Godzilla monster movie setup. That'd be great. Josh Collins joins as Agent Sabbath in episode six of this series. So six out of 10. I don't know what it would entail. What happens in episode six? Sounds like we're going to get some agents involved, obviously. Agents always makes me think of like when we were casting for Apex 
effects for Godzilla vs. Kong. They were casting like Apex agents and stuff. I don't totally know what that means, but just based on the name Agent, I'm kind of thinking it's going to be a bad guy. I'm kind of thinking it's going to be a bad guy working against our main characters. That would also line up at about the midpoint of the series that they'd be having new adversities come their way. Christopher Herdahal and Roman Candela join as General Puckett, who's a reoccurring character, and his son. General Puckett sounds cool. It sounds like a new Admiral Stens type character. An important military figure who might serve as a sort of antagonist, sort of protagonist within the series. That'd be great. Also, I like giving him a human connection with the son. It gives weight to the human story, which is always very important. But it sounds like his son is not a reoccurring character, so I think he's going to be like left at home kind of the way that Sam Brody was. The director's list was updated for this new show, so now we have a better look at who we're getting to direct what in this series. Episodes 1 and 2 will be directed by Matt Shackman. Episodes 3 and 4 by Julian Holmes. Episode 5 and 6 will be done by Marcia Almas. Episode 7 and 8 will be by Hiromi Kamata. Episodes 9 and 10 will be by somebody we don't know yet. Someone who at the time of this video was not revealed. I like that each director is given two episodes to flesh out their identity within the show and make their mark. I think that's good stuff. It makes it so that the show probably won't be like tonally inconsistent from episode to episode to episode. It also allows directors to have things set up in one episode that they get to pay off in the next episode. That way they can carry through their stories before setting up new stuff. Set video shows filming at the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building. Now we did mention that there was going to be filming there in a previous video, but here we actually have the filming edit and they are right up next to it. I mean, they are right next to this thing and you can see the crews taking over the streets and filming all over the place. It also looks like if I see way down there a crane car, I believe that's what I'm looking at. It's a car with a crane attached to it so that they can film moving shots of a car moving down the street. Now we did talk about in a previous video how green screens were set up there and how potentially we could be seeing monsters visit this location. Now this location has appeared in Godzilla movies before and has been the site of Godzilla monster battles. So that would be really, really exciting to see us return there for a monster fight. I'm not getting my hopes up for a monster to come on the mainland of Japan in this show. However, after seeing all the stuff we have in this video, I am thinking we will probably potentially see a monster attack in the Japanese seas in this show, which would be just as cool. We also have a set photo showing the Seattle police, which means I guess we're headed to Washington in this show. This show is going all over the place, which is great. I love fleshing out the actual world of the Monsterverse. A photo shows Joe Tippett as Tim, his character, in hairdressing with a big gash on his head. So I think he's going to get punched or something in one of these episodes. He looks a little dirty, which makes me think he's been in a fight or has been in an attack or something or is the survivor of a Godzilla or monster encounter. That'll be really exciting to see. That's not the only photo we have of him as News West Boy gives us some set photos showing NSOI's Kate walking down the street followed by another picture of Joe Tippett's Tim. This was being filmed in Vancouver and it was serving as Seattle, Washington. Now if you look, Joe Tippett doesn't look to be having his gash on his head and his makeup here so I think this is probably going to be pre-destruction sequence that lands him with that gash. NSOI is also dressed differently than she was in the first episode so I don't think this is going to be within the first episode. I'm thinking she might go from San Francisco to Seattle and then to Tokyo because we know she eventually winds up in Japan herself. We have additional set photos showing the San Francisco Chinatown aftermath. This was filmed in Vancouver. These photos give us a better look at the Bayside Observer newspaper which is fun stuff and also all those paper lanterns all over the place and the destruction everywhere. The car that always sticks out in all of these photos is that green slug bug that just look at that thing. It looks very retro. It looks like now we're getting into the period piece of this even though this stuff wasn't period. This stuff was just set in 2014 but I do love the aesthetic of it and I like this destruction. I think it looks great. We did talk about the fact that they have a green screen up probably to put in more rubble and aftermath and smoke and stuff but it could also be because we're getting maybe a new angle of Godzilla leaving the city at the end of the 2014 movie or something like that. Principal shooting was set to wrap soon with Hawaii and British Columbia filming happening at the exact same time so that's probably where they've split their actors so some actors who need to film certain scenes down here are filming down here while other actors who need to film other stuff up here are filming up there. British Columbia is in Canada that's where all the Vancouver stuff was going on. Hawaii has been used for pretty much every single Monsterverse project up to date. It was in 2014, King of the Monsters, Skull Island, Godzilla vs. Kong, even I think Godzilla x Kong the New Empire, so it's been in all of the Monsterverse so far. I believe that's where this photo comes to us from, the woods in Hawaii. I love the mist here. Good vibes. But this photo just shows the crew lined up on this big street. They've got this area locked off and they're probably filming deep in the woods. I'm not sure what. Could be exteriors, could be a cabin. I literally have no idea. We cannot see. All we can see is those nice little bathrooms right there. Hooray! The crew can go potty. That's important, man. It is important to have bathrooms on set. That's also why you've got like multiple directors shooting at the same time. That's another reason you get multiple directors is because now you can shoot the show simultaneously in multiple different areas and it takes less time to do. All right, that's all of the updates for this one, guys. I want to give a huge 
huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you very much for the support. I really appreciate it. It goes a super long way towards helping support this channel, making sure I can keep making videos like this for you guys. If you want to support the Patreon, you can use the link in the description below where you can get early access to content, access to the Discord community, and more. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man, out. Thank <laughs> you.